Hi, this is Tim. In the last video, we talked about manual control, or mainly, can we just walk up and just set it at six inches, as opposed to doing all this PID and having all these PLCs? And we talked about how sometimes it could work, and also how lots of times it doesn't work. In this video, we want to talk about on-off control, which is actually a very popular type of control that does work in many applications. So for this, what we're going to be doing is we want this ultimately at the six inch mark. But instead of having it where we can vary our speed a little up and a little down, we're going to have it where it's off, on, off, on. And there's a lot of applications for this. Probably the most popular one is a water storage tank. Water storage tanks don't sit there at a specific spot. They have a pump and it'll pump them up to a full mark. And then as you use water, it'll go down. And then when they get to a low level, they kick on again. And that's what we're gonna do. But before we can do that, we actually need to scale this analog sensor because this is our first time working with that. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, please put them down in the comments, especially in this series. Your questions are probably gonna steer where our videos go. For this video, we are using our Compact Logics Trainer and we're using Industrial Concepts PID Trainer. If you're coming into this series and you haven't watched our beginning videos, I'll put a link to those in the description because we go through how we interfaced our PLC trainer with the PID trainer and also we've done an overview of it. In our last video, we created our basic program and we used our analog output to manually position the ball where we want it. In this video, the first thing we need to do is we actually need to look at this level sensor and get it scaled so that we can read it in some units. Our level sensor is connected to module two. So we're gonna go into local colon two colon I and then right here, channel zero has it. It's sitting at the bottom right now, and let's call that 400. So our low level is gonna be 400 units on our analog range. So now let's figure out what our high one is. So we're gonna go back down to local colon three colon O, channel zero, and that is our analog output, and we're gonna put 10,000, which is 10 volts. And then we're going to turn it on. And yeah, I would call that right at about 12 inches on our scale. And so let's see what our value is now. It's about, oh, let's call that 7,700. So the low range of our scale is going to be 400. And our high range is going to be 7,700. And now we want to scale that from zero inches to 12 inches. Now there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could use the equation y equals mxb in a compute statement, which I have a video on that. I'll put it a link to it in the description. Or in our function block diagram routines, we have a scale instruction. And since we're going to be doing our PID instruction in a function block diagram, we're going to go ahead and create that task. So let's go offline. And let's right click task and we're gonna click new task. And this will be a periodic task and we're gonna call it our PID task. And then let's right click that new PID task and we're gonna click a new program and we're gonna call it our PID program. And finally, let's right click our PID program and add a new routine. And you guessed it, it's gonna be called the PID routine. And mainly we wanna make sure that type is the function block diagram. Let's go ahead and open up our PID routine. And then let's go to our process tab and you're gonna see the SCL scale instruction. Let's go ahead and bring that down and then let's bring down an input reference and an output reference. And then you'll see there's a little dot there that turns green. 
when you mouse over it. When it's green, click on it, and let's drag that over to our input, and let's drag this over to our output. And for our input, it is going to be the raw data off of channel zero of our analog voltage input. So we're gonna go for local colon two colon I dot, and we can bring this down if you're not sure. We're gonna be looking for channel zero data. And then for our output, we're gonna use level sensor in inches which is a tag I already created. Just to show you how, let's make level in inches one. And you see now it has a red X by, and that's because it hasn't been created. So we'll right click it and click new. And then we want a data type of real. That's how you would create that. Now click on the view block properties of our scale instruction. And a couple things, because we haven't talked a lot about function blocks yet. First, you're gonna see this visibility column here. And this determines what is actually shown in that instruction when you're looking at the function block diagram. And this can be really good for either giving you a lot of variety or simplifying the instruction. And just to show you what it would look like, let's just click our in RAWs and our engineering unit RAWs and click OK. So now we have these where we could tie them to external variables. Let's say if maybe we had an HMI where we could adjust those variables for say the RAW input so that you could easily change to a different sensor, that might be a time you'd want that. In our case, they're gonna be fixed. So we're gonna uncheck those boxes. And honestly, I forgot what those raw values were. I think, it's, uh, I think they were 7,600 and 400. But so our raw max, we're gonna put 7,700. Let's put 7,700. And then for our raw min, it's gonna be 400. So what that is, is when this thing is sitting here low, it was putting out an analog signal off of our sensor of 400 units. And when we had it up at the 12 inch mark, we were putting out 7,700 units. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna scale that. So for our engineering units, zero I do want down here where it's sitting at rest. Our max units, we want to put at 12 for 12 inches. We'll click okay. And now let's go ahead and download this program. Okay, and we're actually showing zero right now on channel one. And so we're showing a negative. Oh, because we have the power off. So let's go ahead. Well, one, let's just turn the power on. Okay, and yeah, it is bouncing a little bit. And we're bouncing a little here. So let's go back to our controller tags now. And well, let's just throw 4,000 at it. Okay, and looks like we're about... Oh, let's call that seven inches. Yeah, we're about seven inches. So our scaling is fairly accurate. Accurate enough that we can definitely do on-off control. So now what we want to do is we want to, let's say, we want this to turn on wide open when it drops below four inches. And we want it to run until it goes up to eight inches. That's where we're gonna start at with this. Let's create a few variables for this. That way we can change it on the fly. We're gonna to go to edit tags. So let's start with a high stop setting. And that's gonna be a real. And then we're gonna have a low start setting which is also going to be a real and we're not actually going to do this within our function block programming because one thing is the on off control is probably something you probably see more in ladder also i want to begin easing some people into the idea that everything doesn't have to be 100 percent ladder or 100 percent function block or 100 percent structured text so we are going to go up to our main task and let's open up our main program and then our main routine. And let's go over to our compare tab and let's bring down an LES less than instruction. And we're gonna look at that level in inches. 
And our source B is going to be that low start setting. And now let's put a branch around that and let's bring another LES instruction down. And this time we're gonna look at that level and in inches again, and we're going to look at the high stop setting. And let's go to our bit tab and bring an OTE output energized down. And we're gonna look at a tag, let's just call this run pump. And we'll right click it. We want a new run pump and it will be Boolean. Let's bring down an XIC examine if closed instruction and let's look at that run pump. We've been through this before. This is your basic start stop based off of a level. So I'll put a link to it down in the description if you want more details. But now let's add another wrong and let's put examine if on and let's drag this run pump down and let's use a move logical and let's put a move, an MOV move. And we're gonna move 10,000 to local colon three colon O dot. And we're gonna do channel zero. So this means anytime it needs to run the pump, we're gonna put 10 volt to this fan. And then let's copy and paste that instruction. And then let's go to our bit tab and let's bring down and examine an off instruction and move that run pump over to it and just delete that. And in this case, we're going to put a zero. So what this says is whenever the run pump is on, move 10 volt. Whenever it's off, move zero volt. And let's try this out. So I'm going to download this program. And then we'll switch to run mode. Okay, and it's saying 10,000. Let's turn this back on now. Well, actually, we need to put some values in this low start setting and high stop setting. So we can just double click right here. And our low, I want to start that. Let's go for four inches. And then we want to stop it at eight inches. And so what this should do is it should make the pump kick on if we're below four, as soon as we get up to eight, it should stop and it should stay between four and eight. Let's see how it works. So I'm gonna turn this on. And this is very basic on off control. And you can see we're overshooting on the top end. We're actually going down too low. So a lot of issues, but for a lot of applications, this works just fine. Some good examples, like I said, the level sensor, it would do it. Um, well, one that we complain about in our house, and you probably do also, is it's cold in the middle of winter, and all of a sudden you're like, man, is it getting cold in here? And about that time the heat turns on, and that's because it has this same range on it. Maybe you have it set at 72. It may not come on until, say, 70, or maybe in 68, and it'll heat up. Cool down, heat up, cool down. This video helps you understand a few things actually. This, hopefully you'll understand why there is a need for PID control, why sometimes on off control work. Also, we learned how to scale our input for a PID control. And we did a little dabbling with function blocks. So any questions that come up, put them down in the description. Next, we will write our PID instruction. Till next time. Hey, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.